So I see a lot online and all the groups that I'm in, um, there's always that question of how do you price your artwork? And honestly, it is a really hard thing to do, um, especially if you struggle with finding self-worth in what you do and thinking that nobody's going to pay for uh, your time or what you've done. So I've sat down and I've thought about the things that have helped me to become the artist that I am today. And I wanted to share those with you. So first of all, we need to shake off all that negative energy of thinking that you're not good enough, that no one's gonna pay for your work, that you're not worth it. Because there are people out there who wish they could draw like you, they wish that they could create like you. And there's always someone out there that is admiring what you do. So number one on the list is to change your mindset. And that's really important. The second thing that I would say uh, for you to do is to really understand your audience. What are you trying to do? Are you a pet portrait artist? Do you like to draw wildlife? Do you like to draw people or scenery? Different groups mean different things and they're willing to pay differently as well. And how you find your niche is totally up to you. Um, play around, see what your audience likes, see who responds well, see what you fall into, what group you fall into of how you like to create. And that's how you'll find your spot. I started out by drawing birds and I used mostly graphite pencil. So it, to me, it was like a really easy thing to do. And I, I realized that a lot of people put a lot of respect into birds and they have a lot of emotional ties to birds as well. So that was, you know, my beginnings of jumping into the pet portraits. So next you want to think about what services you offer. Do you just draw pets? Do you only draw people? Do you just like to draw scenery? Um, each one of these things is very um, important to certain groups of people. So if you are too broad in what you do and what you offer, sometimes that can be hindering to the customer. The customer might be confused as to what you offer. So if you're going to be broad in what you offer, I would suggest to be extremely clear about the cost, how much time it usually takes. Um, this will help. Now I noticed in my own business, it was very important for me to keep things kind of on, on a smaller scale. If you offer too many things, then the customers do get confused on, on to what you do offer. So. So what I did was I picked three sizes that helped me. I have a small, a medium, and a large. And all three of these, um, I worked my way up to these prices. So I started out as really cheap. A five by seven is like $40 is what I started out as. And within two months, I raised my prices. And that is kind of the rule of thumb. If you are booked for two months, then you need to raise your prices if you know then you're too cheap now if you are able to book for two months or even a year out you know and you want to keep it that way keep it that way and that's totally up to you i wanted to get to a point where i was comfortable and creating pieces every month for clients and then also call it my career so if you're like me, you wanna make this your career. You want to make sure that you can make a living off of this. So that's why I'm telling you what I'm telling you. So another tip I wanna give you is exposure. Um, it can be really hard to break on the scene of YouTube and social media platforms, but I'll say that even local exposure, people don't know if you're a great artist, they don't know and you're not going out anywhere, you're not showing your stuff off. A lot of times, you know, people will offer for you to do their, you know, to draw their dogs or whatever, which is great for practice, absolutely. But you need it to pay the bills. So. I would suggest, you know, marketing, um, go to your local vets, you know, your vet office or go to, you know, any kind of dog shows and, you know, set up a table, show people your work, talk to people. A lot of people like to talk. They like to show their pictures of their pets, talk to them about their pets, ask their names. Exposure is super important. And along with that, staying relevant is equally important. I know it sounds cliche, I know it sounds like terrible, but staying with um, trends and everything if you're doing online uh, social media stuff, it's really important to just keep people looking at your stuff. More, The more and more people look at it on social media, the more they want to get to know you, the more that they become a fan. So hopefully this has helped you think outside of the box a little bit. And if you have any more questions, I am here, leave a comment. And if this video has helped you, 
please subscribe so that you can be on top of getting more content.